You do like this Houston team. So let's start there. One seed out in the Midwest. They were your number two overall one seed. The Marcus Sasser growing on Saturday night is huge here, Terrence. Well, it absolutely is because it gives them a guy that they can go to at the end of the clock. Uh, that's one huge part of it. I, I mean, when you get to the NCAA tournament, everybody knows everybody. The scouting is so good, and you have to have guys that are able to make plays on their own at the end of both the shot clock and at the end of games. Marcus Sasser is certainly that. Jarris Walker is obviously terrific. But this Houston team, they control their controllables as well as anybody else in college basketball. It looks like it hurts to play Houston. You cut through the lane, you're getting chucked. You go for an offensive rebound, you can forget it. These guys dominate the boards. They really defend. Ben. And when Marcus Sasser's playing, they're as good as anybody because he's that guy that can create shots at the end of the clock and put them in position to win. They're high level. They've been that way all year. I actually, I'm not discouraged by them dropping one towards the end of the season. I'm not discouraged about that. A lot of times that actually helps guys kind of get back in the rhythm of things. Houston's still good. I actually have them picking that. I have them winning the national championship in Houston. Jim Nance's last game calling it. He's a Houston guy. It's going to be a storybook ending. I need this to happen because I have Houston. So I, I like your call there. I want to go to a team right now that's the number one overall seed, Alabama. We were talking about them before you came on. Um, what do you like about them, or is there something that you may see with them that you may not like? Tell me how you break down Alabama because I thought they've really played well. NATO has done a tremendous job. Oh, he's done a ter terrific job. And another thing is when you have the best player on the floor every night, you're going to give yourself a chance. Yeah. Alabama is absolutely terrific. And – I think a lot of it goes back to the unsung hero of that team. Charles Bidiaco, they can get out and they can play that pressure defense because he's back there waiting on him. He fixes a lot of mistakes. That's one of the great things about him. Uh, it's a team that can shoot it. Mark Sears was a terrific addition from Ohio. It's a team that can defend at a high level. They can take some risk out on the perimeter defensively. And with Charles Bidiaco back there in the back, it, it changes things for them from a defensive perspective. It reminds me a lot of the Alabama team from a few years ago when Herb Jones was on the team. They could defend, they could switch, and they had guys behind them that could really protect the rim. This Alabama team does it on both ends, and when you need a basket – you have the most talented player in college basketball and Brandon Miller. That certainly helps things. Terrence Oglesby, the field of 68 analyst joins us here on sharp money, a team. I know you saw in person Kent state. So let's talk about this 13, four matchup with Indiana. They absolutely boat race Toledo uh, the other night. It's a very well balanced Kent state team. Th this, the reason I bring it up, Terrence is because they're getting bet here. Indiana opened a five and a half point favorite. It's down to four. Do you agree with those that are betting Kent state right now? I have Kent state to the sweet 16 and I know that might be an unpopular opinion, Wow! but sincere carry can carry a team. And not only that, I was able to see them in person. I watched them play their, their senior night against Akron. That team is big. They're strong. They're physical guys. Referees swallow their whistles in the NCAA tournament. You have to be able to withstand the physicality of what comes with March. Kent State can do that. Sincere Carey, he's an older player. He can score the basketball a little bit unorthodox, and they're filled to the brim with a bunch of power forwards playing guards because they're so tough. Multiple all-defensive team guys in the MAC and multiple bodies that they can throw against Trace Jackson Davis. They can guard on the perimeter, and if they can cover Trace Jackson Davis one-on-one, -on -one, which is very hard to do, I realize that. I think Kent State, from an offensive perspective, can certainly compete because of sincere carry and his playmaking ability in isolation situations. Love the call there on Kent State. Don't hold this next question against me in terms of you coming back on the show, but I've got to ask you about the team that Patrick and I think are playing as well as anybody, and that's Duke. Right now, Lively, Filipowski, Roach. This team really seems to have it rolling. Tell me how you break down Duke. They have Oral Roberts and the potentially Tennessee, Louisiana there. But we think they could be a nightmare matchup potentially for Purdue. I have them in the Final Four. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. I don't have Purdue making it all the way that direction. I think Memphis gets Purdue in the second round. And mm -hmm. I'll, we'll get to that here in a minute. But this Duke team are playing well at the most crucial part of the year. And give John Shire a lot of credit. I think he's done a terrific job throughout the course of this season. Why? He's had to adjust constantly, but yet their defense has held them up the majority of the year. I think the biggest curveball that he threw into this entire mess was when Tyrese Proctor and Jeremy Roach started the season. Proctor was the two, Roach was the one. Well, he found out that wasn't working all that well. Switches him. Proctor, Proctor brings the ball up the floor, and Roach can come into a secondary playmaker, which quite frankly – 
fits his game and style of play a little bit more. Derek Lively's come along as a rim protector. They've guarded all year long, and now Derek Whitehead and some of these other guys have gotten comfortable with what they're doing. This Duke team is dangerous, and Kyle Filipowski, who I hadn't even mentioned yet, is a guy that you can go to, a skilled four-man that's seven feet that makes plays happen with consistency. John Shire's done a terrific job, and they could also play in Houston, and I have them there. Well, 7-1 to one to get out of their region if you do like Duke. Wow. Terrence Ogles will be joining us. And I think, like you said a, a little earlier, Amal, uh, if Coach K is teaching this, if he's coaching this team, I don't know if they're defending like they are for Shire. You know, to me, I, I look, you know I don't like the Rats, so I'm going to criticize them, and I like John Shire. <laughs> okay, <it'll> be nice. <laughs> I, I am being – listen – Look, the bottom line is they bought in defensively. And, Terrence, what I was saying is you never saw a team that could stymie Carolina the way they have in the two matchups this year. I was really impressed with what they're doing defensively. And one of the things I like is nobody's trying to play over their skis. Roach does what he needs to. Filipowski, which you referenced, does what he needs to. Lively doesn't try to go out there and be a 10-10 and 10 guy. He's like, I'm going to defend it, and I'm going to grab rebounds, and then I'll go and run, uh, run to the rim when necessary. Uh, there's a lot to be said there. Role definition is so incredibly important, and Shire has done that while having his guys still in a good mood. How many college coaches can you get guys, one through seven, one through eight, to be in a good mood about their role? It's huge. And the fact that they're finally healthy. One of the things that I liked early in the season, and you referenced it, I don't think Coach K would have had this team defended like they, defending like they are now. Uh, I, to be honest with you, I felt like Coach K, he was getting some of these ultra-talented guys. He was just letting them go. This recruiting class that's here now, wasn't as highly touted and it wasn't as as good of a class coming in. So he had to pick and choose his spots, put guys in the right spot. And he's certainly done that. I liked it at the beginning of the year. He would throw in some pressing segments to try to mix some things up when teams were really in a rhythm. Hasn't done that as much as of late, but with Whitehead back, with Lively playing as he is, uh, you have to love what they're doing defensively. We were talking, Terrence, during the break uh, the Mountain West, 0 for 4 last year. They got four more teams in this year. College of Charleston. Ke Kelsey, you saw this team in person. He's done a hell of a job with College of Charleston and San Diego State, a round one matchup. San Diego State, I don't know if it's the football team. We were joking. It looks like they live in the gym, uh, but they're laying five against the College of Charleston team here. You know what? I love that Charleston team. I had a... Con uh, uh a chance to call them whenever they played Del Delaware in conference early in the season for CBS. And, I, and it's a, it's a team that's so deep and so old and so strong. They have three guys, gentlemen, that are division two transfers that transferred up and are big time contributors. One guy that's an NAIA transfer that transferred up is a big time contri contributor. You want to talk about a big, strong team in San Diego state while Charleston doesn't necessarily look that way. They have a lot of guys that are almost 26, 27 years old, it seems like. They're not actually that old, but you get my drift. Uh, it's a team that they're, they're 10 deep. They play a lot of bodies. They play a certain style. If they play quick, and it's all going to come down to tempo, if Charleston plays quick and they're hitting shots from the perimeter, I like Charleston to win in that game. And when you talk about the Mountain West, the team that I do have picked to advance, I like this Boise State team. I've called them a couple of times for FS1. Boise State – and what Leon Rice has done, they have weapons. You play against a team in Northwestern that has Boo Booey, that has Chase Audige. Max Rice is really talented. He can score it, but it's going to come down to Marcus Shaver. I really like the way that young man plays. He's composed. If they're able to stay composed, not turn the basketball over and give Northwestern easy shots around the basket, this Boise team can win a game. Terrence Oglesby joining us, and we did hoodwink him for another segment. We were talking, Terrence, uh, and I know you worked out there in the past. We were talking about Vegas. You know, the second weekend is going to be Sweet 16 Elite 8 in Vegas. Uh, all kidding aside, is that's kind of a trap for some of these kids going to the Vegas for the first time. Yeah, they got to they be careful. They got to be careful out in the streets of Vegas. That's for sure. No, I, it's a look, it's a great city. It's been long overdue. And the way that uh, sports betting has kind of not finalized around the country. I think it was a no brainer to get it there. I mean, what better way to host a lot of different teams and a lot of different people than to get them out to Las Vegas. I think it's a great idea. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, you bring up a great point. Next year, the final four is going to be here. Terrence, real quickly, in terms of the t TV timeouts, they're longer in because the CBS broadcast has more commercials. How much does that help a team that's got a shorter bench and the rotations tend to tighten up? How much are you concerned about depth and rotations as we get into these matchups in the round of 64 and round of 32? I think depth always hurts, but really who wins 
NCAA championships, it's talented teams, yeah. talented teams with coaches that defend. I, I think that's the big thing. Uh, TV timeouts, what is it? 30 seconds. I, I'm not as worried about teams getting tired outside of the time that we played Villanova in the first round in Tampa. I want to say in 2008, where we had seven practices within 48 hours. And let me say this guys, if we're, there's a lot to be said here. It's difficult sometimes for coaches to realize that at this point in the season, less is more because you have media time. You have media time for all your players. You have a media practice there at the facility. You have a walkthrough on your own, and then you might have practice on your own. You have to be careful at managing how much time your guys are on your feet because I saw on a firsthand basis, if you practice too much, it could really hurt you. We were up 20 on Villanova in 2008. They end up coming back and beating us in the second half for no other reason than we were exhausted. So to elaborate on your point, I'm sure it helps. What is it, an extra 30 seconds? I, I thought it was a minute, but I could be wrong. Wow, that, that's pretty substantial. But at the same time, like I'm not overly concerned with the TV timeouts. To be honest with you, it's the first time I've really even thought about it. Good question. <laughs> you saw you saw Vermont in person. I'm going to tell you what's happening right now with the market and have you react, Terrence. Marquette. Marquette, Amal and I were talking. That's a legit national title contender. Mar Marquette's a wagon right now. However, Marquette opened 11.5 point favorite. It's been bet down to 10.5, so the sharp players are betting Vermont here. What are your thoughts on this Marquette-Vermont matchup? Is there a tougher guy? in college basketball than Tyler Kolick, I want to say no. Uh, I had him voted, you know, first team All-American. He, he's one of those guys that can really make it happen from a different, from a variety of positions. And you're playing two teams that like to play five wide and spread it out. Uh, here's my only issue with how Vermont plays. They rely on Dylan Penn to make a lot of plays from the post. Whenever you're playing against bigger power conference teams, you're having to make it make those plays against bigger, stronger, more physical players. So the type of guy they're going to be going up against scares me. That being said, Finn Sullivan uh, was the America East player of the year. He's terrific. You have different guys that can make things happen. Uh, Matt Verretto was, get this guys, played at Delaware one season, took three years away, got his finance degree at UConn, decided, hey, I want to play basketball again. Goes and plays for Vermont this year, and he's a three-point shooter who lit it up in the second half of the championship game. It's a team that can shoot. It's a team that plays unselfish and really passes the ball. The only problem is when things shut down, I'm not really sure they have somebody that can score facing the basket. It's going to make it difficult. When you're playing a Marquette team that has several of those guys, I think that 11 points, I would lean more towards Marquette as opposed to Vermont. I want to go to an intriguing matchup on the 8-9. There's actually two of them here. Uh, Illinois, Arkansas, Razorbacks, two-and-a-half-point favorite. We saw Nick Smith, big-time recruit, wouldn't be a high lottery pick. He was injured early in the season. This Illini team, to me, has been a little bit disappointing. Uh, Terrence Shannon transfers in. He hasn't quite had the impact that I thought he would, and then Michael Mayer from Baylor as well. Uh, how do you see this matchup? I, it's it's hard for me to disagree with you there. Illinois, for all intents and purposes, I looked at them as the Big Ten team that could make the deepest run. The only problem is they ran into that 8-9 game, so they have to beat Arkansas and then potentially, who is it, Kansas? Yeah. Ooh, that's not something I would wish on anybody. Arkansas is really talented. I just feel like Illinois, they're so well-rounded to where they can compete with you in different ways. Do you need to guard somebody bigger? You have Dane Danes you could throw in there. Do you want to go five smaller, quote-unquote? Coleman Hawkins could play the five at 6'10", 6'11". Then you have Matt Meyer who can step out and shoot the ball and also defend at a high level. Illinois hasn't been consistent, but when they're good – they're really, really good because they have several different guys that can create shots, can make shots, and when they share the ball, they're elite. I feel like Coleman Hawkins has finally taken that step into superstardom, especially during Big Ten play. Can he move it over against a quality team in Arkansas that has dealt with their series of issues all season long? And both of these teams, quite frankly, guys, in my opinion, have underperformed throughout the course of the year. These were teams that we thought would be two, three, four seeds in the NCAA tournament. When we looked at them in November, they've struggled with some different things. Sky Clark leaves, Nick Smith dealt with injury. Two really talented teams and two teams that could give Kansas a run for their money. If I'm picking, I like Illinois just because those guys have been together longer and Nick Smith is just kind of brand new to all the equation. Love it. 6-11 matchup. Kentucky-Providence. I ask you, Terrence, because you saw Providence play in person. They've lost four of five coming in. This number's only three and a half with Kentucky laying it. Where are you on Kentucky-Providence as far as a matchup? 
Are, are, are we calling this the Bryce Hopkins Bowl? Because that's important. <laughs> I mean, how good has that guy been for Providence all season long? Uh, it's a Providence team that's tough. Noah Locke, a, tr- a Louisville transfer, can really shoot the basketball, really defend. Jared Bynum has been, I'm not going to say the word disappointing, but I think with this roster, the way it was configured, he didn't fit it as well to where he could be a spark plug off the bench and be a curveball to what was starting for that team last year. This year, he was preseason all Big East and then kind of struggled to get that team to play with any level of consistency. Kentucky and those guys, Oscar Shibway, we know what they are. I felt like Kentucky finally found something there towards the end of the season with going bigger, going a bigger lineup. Antonio Reeves was starting to hit shots. He had a 30-piece towards the end of the season, and then Oscar Shibway is going to Oscar Shibway. Here's my issue, though. I think Ed Cooley is going to coach circles around John Calipari. I think Cal has better players. I think Providence has a better coach. And Oscar Sheway has struggled to guard guard ball screens this year. Cooley's going to put him in that spot. Bynum has to be terrific. If he is, Providence can win. If he's not, Kentucky wins by 15. I want to talk about a matchup with, in my opinion, two good coaching uh, coaches here. Uh, Michael Shrewsbury of uh, Penn State and Texas A&M and Buzz Williams. There's not a bigger Jalen Pickett fan in the country than I am. And I said to Patrick, I'm glad they got in because I want people to be able to see this kid play. Tell me how you like this matchup. AM's a three and a half point favorite. And I think Marble's been underrated in the center area for this AM team all season long. Well, there's a lot to be said there. And not just him, but Tyrese Radford is a bully. At 6'2, 215 pounds, he plays the four at times, guys. And he's one of the hardest <laughs> playing guys in all of college basketball. I love Buzz Williams coach teams. And year four is usually when he starts get roll, gets to uh, his team playing well. Enjoy him, though, while you have him, Texas A&M, because by, six, by year six, he's out of there. Forget about it. That's his, that's his thing. It's a tried-and-true tradition there for Buzz Williams. He's a really good coach, but he preaches toughness, and that team is tough. I think Wade Taylor's the best point guard in the country nobody's talking about. I love Jalen Pickett. He has been that consistent even since his days at Siena, guys. He's been that point forward, power forward, point guard, shooting guard, doesn't matter what he is. He was up for the koozie. What are we talking about? This guy has been terrific all season long Uh, in Penn state. They play small ball. They can shoot it. That being said a quick story. When I was coaching at Clemson, we played Virginia tech when buzz was there. Those guys were down 15. They were still spraying to the helpline. It's hard to get guys to do that. I think buzz is going to get those guys playing in the right way. I think a and M actually makes it to the sweet 16 after playing Texas in the second round. Watch out for that matchup. 30 seconds. You got Houston winning it all. As I believe that's what you said before we started here. I have Houston winning it all and then Bama, Duke, and UCLA in the final four. Go to vsun.com slash subscribe to become a vsun pro subscriber today.